Hello, my name is Jeremy Akers, Jeremy Nathaniel Akers, and I'm going to give you the game on the design elements of liberating structures. Not only am I going to walk you through the design elements, but I'm going to give you the secret of how every liberating structure relates to other liberating structures. Hold on to your butts. All right, before we're going to condense a lot of information into a small space, so let's help understand the map for this territory. What you're looking at is a two by two matrix that is based off of the pattern critical uncertainties. So when it comes to trying a liberating structure for the first time, the most critical element is, has to do with your disposition as a practitioner. And that disposition can go in lots of different ways, but let's just simplify it to two. You can be very, very nervous about trying things for the first time, or you can feel like a courageous badass. Right? You can feel very nervous, have a lot of anxiety, or you can feel like, let's fucking go. This is going to be rad. Right? And depending on how you how you feel about trying these the first time, you know, we can sort of orient our attention. Now, the most uncertain element about using liberating structures, especially for the first time, has is the environment. Lots of different environments exist, but broadly speaking, to simplify all that complexity, are you in an environment that's very skeptical, that is maybe not very open? Or are you, are you in an environment that's a very warm room, that's very receptive and open to trying new things? With these two axes of environment and disposition, or of our two critical uncertainties, we now have given ourselves sort of four quadrants and a few different coping strategies or environments where we might think to try a these structures for the first time right so just some scenario planning if you're in this type of environment what might you see here and notice that lets you know you feel skeptical or your environment is skeptical and you feel like a courageous badass if you feel like all right let's go for it and you sort of see people you know uh, in suits um, scowling, um, you know, and uh, with their arms crossed. Or if you're in a warm room of people smiling and you have that same feeling of let's fucking go, um, you know, lots of nodding of heads, then hey, you may be in this warm room environment and want, might want to try this stuff out for the first time. And, you know, if you're feeling a little bit more nervous, even in the face of these nice, smiling, nodding people, um, uh, clammy hands, racing heart, you might want to stick with these guys and to help build your confidence. Um, and if you're in that blue suited environment, oh shit, you're not feeling, you're feeling super sketchy, but you still want to try some stuff out. These might be the simple guys that can help you warm the room up as well as yourself. So, with that being said, now that we know our orientation uh, in the territory, how do these things fit together? And what in God's name do I mean by design elements? Well, liberating structures, every liberating structure, is, consists of the same five design elements. These are the, the minimum specifications, the blueprint of the patterns that is liberating structures. This is the, the minimum the design elements are the recipe itself. And the first three design elements are how participation is distributed, how groups are formed, and steps of time. So there is an assumption that participation is distributed and that groups should be formed, probably small ones, and that we are going to do something that is somewhat algorithmic, that has a set of steps spread out over time. It has a recipe and a set of moves to it. The liberating structures that most exemplify these first three design elements go in this box 
of support. The supporting cast I consider interaction patterns. They are very, they are the underlying mechanics upon that support every other type of liberating structure. And they are, roughly speaking, um, starting with the, the most broadly available. Um, if I was in hell, so to speak, I would make use of one, two, four, all. One, two, four, all. The, the two-step of liberating structures. One minute of silent reflection, two minutes of dialogue, four minutes for a small group conversation, and then upregulating the results of all those conversations into the shared space of everyone. One, two, four, all. If I, it may take a little bit more confidence to pull off impromptu networking. Impromptu networking, this series of three separate one-on-one -on -one conversations of five minutes in length around the same topic. It's, you, you'll notice that it's tricky to interrupt people um, in, when they're having a really great conversation. They don't want to move on to their next partner, but that's an essential element. So it's going to take a little bit more courage to really shove yourself in there and say, all right, it's time to move on to the next. Again, if I'm feeling a little bit more anxious, but I'm in a, a generally speaking safe space, I may want to open things up a little bit more with a conversation cafe. The simple pattern of working the circle or working in rounds, if you're familiar with that jargon, where we go around the circle once and we respond to the que central question or prompt. We go around the circle twice and we respond to each other. We open up the space for some open, unstructured dialogue, still using some form of top, talking object. And then we go around the circle a final time, sharing our takeaways. Conversation Cafe. Very adaptable. And if I'm in a warm room and I'm feeling great, Troika Consulting every day of the week. Split into trios. One person takes the role of the client. The other two take the role of consultants. The client offers their question, help request, or topic that they want some advice about. And then the, the consultants take a couple minutes to ask some clarifying questions. And the then the consultant turns his back on the clients in remote environments or mutes themselves and turns off their webcam but importantly listens while the consultants have a short five minute conversation about the client's situation, offering their advice, insight, recognition, uh, what have you around the client's case. And then the client comes back in and says, hey guys, what I, when I heard you guys talk, this portion really stuck for me and I think I'm gonna take that forward and make use of it. Troika Consulting, and then Rotate roles so everybody gets a share. You know, between 30 to 45 minutes, everybody gets help, one, gets help once and gives help twice. So generally speaking, this pattern of I listen while you two talk, we go around the circle, we build up in one, two, four, all, or back to back to back one-on-one -on -one conversations. These four liberating structures kind of are the most broadly adaptable and represent these three, these three design elements, and I consider them interaction patterns that can support um, in any different environment and just about any different conversation. So, the fourth design element of liberating structures, which is actually the most critical, important, and often tricky, is the invitation. Invitation is the sort of inside baseball jargon that we use to describe the question, the prompt, or the topic of any conversation or any interaction. We invite people to discuss WXYZ. 
And those interaction and those interaction patterns can be filled with any of these different invitations. Um, this is not a prescriptive model, so you can use this invitation pattern over here or over here or over here or over there. But if you're trying it out for the first time, maybe look for an environment that looks like this and looks like this to try this, give this a go the first time. So let's start with hell again. If I was in hell, I would be making use of two invitational liberating structures, um, inviting people to be, get very clear about the purpose, right? very practical, um, with nine whys, this one-on-one -on -one inquiry into purpose, meaning, significance, why, 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 over and over and over again. I would also be inviting people uh, to look for 15% solutions with no more time, resources, or authority. What can you do right now? What's the first step or the, f or the most micro sliver of a solution, the 15% version of the grand architect solution that we can implement right now? If I'm feeling better, a little bit more confident in my swag in this sketchy, skeptical environment, I'll probably stick with something that's a much more practical with what, so what, now what. Working up this ladder of inference, looking for factual observations and data, looking for inference, meaning, and significance of that data, and then deciding what to do based on all of that information. Extraordinarily practical, very broad and wide application. And if I'm really feeling myself, regardless of how skeptical these fuckers are, I might throw some wicked questions at them and get them to stop that bullshitting and yeah, but, and get them to explore paradox. Hey, Mr. Blue Suit and Red Tie. Hey, Mr. Blue Suit and Blue Tie. How might we your thing and your thing at the same time? How might we be both liberal and conservative at the same time? Ooh, that is a wicked question. Hold on, let me think about that. So a great integration move is to look for wicked questions. What paradoxical realities must we face in order to be successful? Really good showstopper that gets people scratching their head and thinking way outside of the box. Again, if I'm somewhat, fe if I'm feeling somewhat nervous, uh, but I am in a warm room, then I may try something a little bit simple that um, creates some good vibes, appreciative interviews, invite people to tell a story about a time that was really awesome that looks like the type of success we're going for in this instance. Just tell a story one-on-one -on -one about a situation that was like this that turned out really great, and then look for the patterns in between both, of, both parties' story to find the signal that might reveal principles that we could use in the here and now. Drawing together. Now, Interestingly enough, we're inside of drawing a drawing together right now. J using just five symbols where a triangle equals goal, a square or rectangle equals support, a spiral equals change or chaos, a circle equals wholeness, and a star person equals relationship, describe or draw any concept, any anything you can imagine using just those five symbols. Then, once you've drawn your, uh, your thinking with those five symbols, show it to another person and let them interpret it without you explaining it. And then maybe explain your intention behind it, and vice versa. Interpret the drawing of someone else without their explanation. And 
behold, as you manufacture insight, that while not exactly what the, the, the artist intended, is probably spot on with exactly what they meant. And if I'm feeling like a badass motherfucker and I'm in a, in a super warm room, maybe with a, some squishy feelings, I might want to lean into Triz pretty hard and go, hey, in this environment, how could we create the worst possible outcomes imaginable? What could we do to turn this whole place into one giant dumpster fire? Lean into the chaotic energy in order to identify the things that we're kind of doing a little bit and should probably fucking stop. For warm rooms, I would definitely want to lean into min specs. If we feel good and we like to be open, then how can we make use of only the absolute essential? Look, after we've brainstormed and come up with all of our awesome actions... Is that if we ignored this one, could we still be successful in achieving our goal? If the answer is yes, we could ignore it, then get the fuck rid of it. If the answer is no, we can't ignore it, well, great. It's part of our minimum specification. And go ruthlessly through that list, not once, but twice. Which ones can we actually, can we maybe ignore or find it? or lean into other more essential things in order to accomplish them. Minimum specifications. So these eight liberating structures represent the design element that is invitation. These are, you can look at these different inner liberating structures as invitations that you can put at the center of all of these different interaction patterns in order to sort of fi fuel or fill them with this type of thinking or content. For probably 85% of everyone in the world, just these, what, 12 liberating structures is probably all you need, actually. So this is, a, this is another type of making use of the liberating structures pattern. If I, I ha would describe these as the most essential liberating structures, the min spec toolkit. So of the 33, learn these 12 first. And if you never promote, learn more than these 12 first, then we're probably, pr you're still pretty damn dangerous. And if you learn these 12, these are great gateways to look for, to, to realize that, hey, I might want more tools in addition to, to these essential ones. So right now we're actually making use of three liberating structures. We used uh, critical uncertainties to give ourselves the map. We're actually using the, the visual language of drawing together, describing support and wholeness or completeness. And we've made use of min specs to come down to this paired list. I can put all liberating structures into the categories, but these are the most essential ones that I want to focus your attention on right here and right now. And last but not least, so again, the four design, uh, design elements that we have so far is how participation is distributed with the assumption that it is, how groups are formed with the assumption that they're small, and what are the set of steps over time that e the structure uh, consists of, and what is the question, prompt, or invitation that we put at the center of that interaction. All liberating structures are made of these four design elements, plus one more, which is how are materials and space organized? Again, how are materials and space organized? So this might be the physical footprint of the room that we're in. Do we sit at tables? Do we stand up? Do we sit at chairs grouped in a small circle or one-on-one, -on -one, you know, sitting uh, with our knees at 90 degrees to each other? Um, do we need visual aids or additional materials like post-its, markers, pens? 
How is space and materials organized and leveraged to make use of these liberating structures? Again, every liberating structure consi consists of these five design elements, but these four on the outside most exemplify this notion of making use of materials and space. So if I'm in a hellish environment where I feel super nervous and I may have a skeptical audience, I may want to lean into the agreement certainty matrix, mapping where things are on the spectrum of very predictable to very unpredictable. What's our challenge, situation, or content? Where does it fall between predictable and unpredictable? So that we may better understand and make sense of the situation we find ourselves in. That type of extraordinarily practical sense making makes sense. No pun intended. If I'm feeling myself, if I've got some more confidence and I'm in a, still in a skeptical environment, I might make use of this very pattern of what are the most critical elements or critical elements and what are the most uncertain elements and how do we create four different scenarios? Describe those scenarios what might we see here and notice that lets me know that I'm here and not here? And what do I call this scenario versus that scenario? And what strategies should I make use of in order to navigate or, or to deal with this scenario and, and um, address the reality that is this situation? So critical uncertainties is a sort of like micro scale scenario planning exercise that is extraordinarily practical. And very often practical is good for skeptical people. Now, if I'm in a warmer room and I'm still maybe a little bit nervous, I might wanna lean into the eco cycle. How do we map our portfolio of activities and see how they flow and identify what activities need more energy and what activities should, we should probably stop so that we can increase the vitality and, and rate of the flow of things, of actions in our portfolio. Super essential exercise. Already, just the term eco and the process of generation, regeneration, birth, maturity and creative destruction. Oh my dear God, that idea of creative destruction may trigger some people. So if you're trying this exercise for the first time, really good to have a warm room and receptive environment so that you can under, so that you can experience how valuable this pattern can be for the very first time. And last but not least, if I'm in a super warm room and I'm feeling myself, then let's do something big that makes that gives us a lot of juice and has a lot of moving parts. Let's make use of an open space technology. Let's first start off our session with brainstorming the topics or content that we might want to address in it. And let's run a, a brief marketplace where everybody pitches the content that they'd like to, that they'd like to bring into that open space. And then let's create an agenda of time and places to put all of those different content subject matter into a different parallel session so that we can give folks the opportunity to invite whoever's interested in that topic to show up and discuss it with them. Um, many more moving parts, but an extraordinarily valuable um, uh, pattern that makes use of how space is organized and how time and, and attention might be organized in a coherent fashion. So really, all liberating structures, every one of the 33 patterns consists of these th five design elements, how participation is distributed, how groups are formed, the set of steps over time, an invitation at the center that sparks off the interaction, and some description about how materials and space might be used and organized. And in these three ways of identifying interaction patterns, invitations, and really thinking about 
artifacts, the materials and space, and the artifacts that you use to organize them, every liberating structure can fit into one of these three buckets. And these 16, I would say, are the most essential. If you're going to learn the whole toolkit, start with these guys, and then give yourself some additional tools after that. But these are the most essential liberating structures, and this is sort of an order of operations about how I might recommend to use it. And, you know, you could use it as a navigational strategy or a coping strategy to make use of these patterns in particular. If I notice that I'm feeling this way and my environment looks like this. Hmm. I mean, I'm a little bit loath to describe them in this sort of prescriptive manner. I don't think it's particularly helpful. I would, I would rather you be a courageous, badass motherfucker with a lot of confidence that feels very well prepared to basically roll a four-sided die in whatever scenario you're in and go, boom, oh, looks like it came up Troika Consulting, and we're going to put, oh, appreciative interviews at the center of that. How in God's name does that work? I don't know, but let's fucking try it out and just see that these things are effectively infinitely recombinable. Uh, but of course, there's no alternative or substitute for being in a situation and making a judgment call that right now, I think in this situation, we're gonna, we might need ourselves a, to clarify purpose or to identify our don't do list or to lean into paradox and think in a different way. This is the blueprint that I would use to learn my first liberating structures and how the whole toolkit relates to each other. Now, if you are looking for, however, a more prescriptive way, so to speak, to um, decide which liberating structures to make use of, I might l encourage you to check out the Liberating Structures Selection Matchmaker. If you have no idea what any of these things are, this is a very cool way. So start off with your question, your scenario, your content, your topic, and just read through this list of every liberating structure and put a check mark or circle the ones that you think might help you address the content. Uh, discover and build on the root causes of success. Okay, that's interesting. Sort challenges into simple, complicated, and complex categories. Maybe not so much in this instance. Uh, move from either or to robust both and solutions. Yeah, I could use that here. So just go through the, this list of different descriptions of each liberating structure and put a check mark to each one you think, ah, that would be good. And then think about, hey, what might be a logical sequence of the ones that I checked off might I maybe I might want to start with you know moving from either or to both then and then move into um, um, stopping counterproductive and then here just see if you can think about which one which is make yourself a short list and think about how you might put them together what might be an interesting order and then reduce your list by taking out the last and less critical and most important ones you can try, always check those later, but see if you can just narrow your list down to just three. Just three, and think about an order of operations for those three. And of course, you know, lean into having a couple plans, right? Make some alternatives. Make three, two or three different sequences of three different patterns, and um, you've got yourself a string. Uh, actually, uh, several strings. So share those strings with others. Make use of that pattern that is Troika Consulting especially to go, hey, this is my situation. The, this is the sequence of answering these questions that I think makes sense for that situation. How do you think that might land or stick? It doesn't really matter even if people ha know what this structure corresponds to. Just describe it to them and let them know what you're thinking. And uh, away you go. And then... Um, and then you want to take this, this sheet, 
this of the selection matchmaker and not do that but grab the grab its other half and there you'll see that each one of those description corresponds to a particular liberating structure and then you can go ahead and see oh so i just designed myself a string of integrated autonomy into triz into what i need from you okay i even if i don't know what those things mean i've now shortlisted uh, just a few structures that i can look into and uh, and un come to understand hey now that i know those five design elements what is the playbook or what's the recipe that makes this structure uh, work and then how can i connect them into from this one into that one into this one okay so first i would do this and these are the steps involved here and then I, these are the steps involved there and these are the steps involved there i would need about one ooh, three quarters three uh, one and a half two and a half to say three hours to host this conversation using these three patterns and I can prepare myself for that and uh, invite other people regardless of the context I can exercise my agency to go hey guys I've been thinking a lot about the situation that's at hand and I have a plan that could sort of guide the conversation um, do you guys want to give it a try it'll take some time but I think by the end of that we'll have a lot of clarity and ha get a lot more engagement than we normally do. The liberating structures uh, matchmaking menu, um, the selection matchmakers, the technical term, um, is a very powerful tool for folks, even if they have no familiarity with liberating structures. This, can, this is a great crutch that can help you like become instantly dangerous and by going through and trying stuff in real life rather than reading them in the book or listening to me talk about them but actually hands-on time in real life meetings and in workshop scenarios is going to teach you more than anybody uh, anybody can like experience 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 you will find that if you can lean into trying these things in real life you will grow so fucking fast and be so fucking dangerous in no time and uh well i i am here to help increase your agency in that way so you can come hang out with me in the wise crowds design call or the think slow dojo every monday at 4 p.m central european time uh, which I think translates to 7 a.m. Pacific, um, 2 p.m. Universal. Again, my name's Jeremy Akers, Jeremy Nathaniel Akers, and this has been how all liberating structures fit together and with a powerful tool about how you can be dangerous very quickly. Hit me up if you need any additional support. I'm happy to help you along in the Liberating Structures learning journey, and I will see you in the future.